So this video is a long time coming. I've had so many requests to do this exact video over what, like two, three years, I guess. But there's been so many times where people have been like, hey, show us your base collection. Hey, sh what bases do you own? So I'm gonna go through all the bases that I own and then at the end, I'm gonna do a lightning round of the bases that are a member that I used to own. I've been buying, selling, trading, like bases and gear since I was 15, so, oh my God, 10 years now. God, I'm getting old. But we got quite a few bases to cover, so let's go ahead and start with my favorite, my Made in Mexico standard jazz base. It's uh, Sage Green, which I guess Fender only made for a couple years, it looks like. It was like 2000 to 2003, or 2001 to 2003, or something like that. I don't know why they don't make this color anymore. It's like one of the coolest colors I've ever seen, and I just want all of my bases that I own to be in this specific color. I love it. Um, I have a badass two bridge on it. Uh, Seymour Duncan SJB threes. They're still the best jazz bass pickups I think I've ever heard, ever played through. I love them. I love this bass. It has a Fender P bass neck, so it's a jazz body but a P-based neck. I know this throws a lot of people off, but I like the the thicker neck that the P-base has instead of the thinner uh, style that the Jazz has. But this is my all-time favorite bass. I love it so much. Um, I've been on tour with it uh, across the country multiple times, and it's never let me down in any way. I love throwing it around, beating it up, and it's still gonna play 100%. Next we have my Made in Mexico standard Fender P bass. Now I've never liked P basses before. I've never gotten along with them. I I've really always liked the style of them and the sound other people could get from them. But they've just never meshed well with me for some reason. I don't know why. I I've legitimately have just always been a jazz bass guy, I guess. But with this P bass, I was able to really fall in love with it and give it a true chance. I put uh, Seymour Duncan SPB3s in it. Uh, super thick, really have a, like a very just meaty tone to them. It really gives a nice thickness to the overall sound of it, which I mean, P basses already have a really thick sound as it is, but my God, these Seymour Duncans just really go over the top with it. This next one is the Squire Bronco in this great just Fiesta Red. Uh, it's an awesome bass. I got it on Craigslist for $80, I think. I still don't know what the pickup is. It's not the stock pickup, and there's no markings on the inside to what it is. It's some sort of Hot Rails no name, I guess. I'm assuming it's a Strat pickup, because this is a really hot pickup. Um, it's surprisingly thick sounding though, but this is a short scale bass. Uh, the tuners are complete garbage, um, but it is such a fun bass to play. Fun story about this one, uh, so this is a Squire Active 4, um, one of the better looking Squires I think that they've ever come out with. It's just such a clean and lean looking jazz bass. Uh, no front pit guard, um, so all you see is the wood and it looks awesome. There are no dots on the fretboard at all and it plays great. Uh, it's an active preamp, but with Squires regular, I guess, jazz like pickups in it but they have a cover to them too. So it's a really slick looking bass, but the way I bought this bass is I traded my old Sans amp for it. So I guess 
what, $150, I guess. Um, I've had it for a few years now, and it's a, just a really fun and great sounding bass, surprisingly, still. Um, I've always had this weird thing for Squires because with a lot of them, you're able to get a great value and a great bass for, again, not a lot of money at all, so it's really cool. There's, I mean, a lot of them are duds, I will say, but there's still quite a few Squires out there that are great sounding, great feeling, great playing, and really dependable basses for a low price. This next one is also kind of a weird story, uh, at least this one's more of a sketchy story, the way I got it. So it's an Ibanez SR505 five string bass, uh, really cool bass, it sounds pretty good. Uh, it's got full 24 frets, it's a lot more fun to play than to actually listen to it in my opinion. Um, I think I would like to update the pickups one day, uh, definitely get a new preamp for it, maybe the dark glass preamp just because I realize I've never used that preamp in any of my basses before. But I got this one off of Craigslist as well for like a hundred, like a hundred, hundred and ten dollars or something like that, something extremely low. And the only way I could meet this person was at like, uh, it was like nine o'clock at night and he wanted to meet me at a GameStop parking lot. And it was like this 16 year old kid and none of it made sense. Uh, this bass has a lot of just weird like gouges out of it. like as if they were bite marks and then filled in with like this really terrible looking putty. Um, when you really get close and look at it, it looks god awful. But I got it for a hundred bucks, which is really cheap for those basses. Um, again, it's not the greatest sounding bass, but it plays awesome. It's so much fun to go across the fretboard. Ooh, okay, so this is a Rogue VB100 uh, viola bass. I don't really like this bass. Uh, it's got flats on it, so that's really cool. Um, I don't know. There's just something about it where I'm just like, this is cool, this is fun. I got this one for really cheap as well, and it was more of just like a, hey, like I've never played a viola bass before, so why not try it out? And it's okay, it's fun, but again, it's n not. Like, I don't like it that much, to be honest. Um, the tone I get from it uh, is sort of all over the place. Uh, the lows are really prominent, and then when you go up the fretboard, it gets really quiet, so there's just no compromise between it unless you use a compressor pedal. Um, but it's a fun bass. I should just play a couple Beatles tunes, to be honest with it. Now this bass has pretty much quickly become one of the best choices and the best purchases I've ever made. Um, got this one off of Craigslist as well, uh, used, it's in perfect condition. Uh, it is a Squire Troy Sanders PJ bass. And what's really cool about this one is silver burst, block inlays, uh, the painted headstock, and there's this really cool thing with it. So you have your P bass uh, pickup volume, you have your jazz bass pickup volume, then you have a bass boost knob. Now on um, Squire and Fender's website, I can't find any information really on the Squire version of the Troy Sanders signature, but it's different. It is different than the Fender Troy Sanders signatures because the Fender one doesn't have this little cool bass boost thing. Um, so that actually makes it an active bass just because of the preamp that it has that bass boost on it. And when you crank it, my god, does your low end get beefed up like no other. And then there's a regular tone knob behind that. But man, the way that I have it set up at least, uh, I do my own setups every once in a while. Um, it's something I'm still learning, I'm doing it slowly, but it's the action is so low and the string height is so low, but there's no buzz to it at all. This bass is super fun to play around with, and even though I prefer thicker necks on uh, Fender style basses, this one has a super slim neck and it's so much fun to play.
So I used to own a PVT-40. It was a natural one though. Um, it was a really cool base. Uh, it was heavy. God, it was so heavy. It was probably 13 pounds, if not like 14 pounds. Uh, never doubt anyone who says basically that the T-40 is one of the heaviest bases that you will ever play. That and a Warwick, they're just giant hunks of wood. They're so cool. But um, I didn't fall in love with that T-40. There was something about it that I just never like, ah, it, it was fun. But it was something I just never was just like, this is awesome. So I sold it. And I sort of have had seller's remorse since then. But go back, uh, I think like a month ago, and there was someone selling their wine red PVT-40 for 250 bucks with the hard case. And I was just like, I can't pass this up. I have to grab this. And so I did. Um, the nut broke by the E string, but again, I'm getting an aluminum one built for it, which is gonna be awesome. Um, but yeah, this wine red PVT-40 is so cool. Uh, definitely one of the best purchases I've ever made. It makes, it makes up for me selling the original natural one I had because eventually I got this wine red one and now I'm definitely never gonna sell it. So this next one is uh, the most money I've spent on a base, which uh, to a lot of people is probably not a lot, um, but it's my Gibson Ripper. Oh, I love this base. It's so much fun. Uh, so basically I was able to get it on reverb for, I think it was like 700, I think. And basically there, uh, the pickups didn't work or the neck pickup didn't work. And so I bought it for cheaper. The electronics were pretty much done. Uh, this was in Florida and I was able to get the seller to ship it to my friend uh, Nick Scout over in Orlando because he does a lot of great luthier work, um, makes great sounding, great feeling, great looking guitars. And I was like, hey Nick, if I get this shipped to you, could you go ahead, replace the pickup, replace all the electronics, give it a great setup and see what you can do with it? And he was like, yeah, of course. And so he was able to set it up put a new uh, Seymour Duncan pickup in it, uh, brand new electronics, wired it exactly how a Ripper should, uh, or was originally wired up, and then got it shipped back to me, and I love this bass. I think all in all, um, the full amount I put into it was like 1,300, um, which for a lot of bases is not a lot of money, like compared to some of the bases that other people own. Um, but $1,300 is, a lot of money. Uh, I tend to have cheaper guitars uh, just because I've always really loved the idea of buying cheap and then modding the hell out of it. Uh, pretty much like my main Fender Jazz Bass. It's you know a cheaper bass, but all with the mods next to it, it's turned into a bass that I love. But with this Gibson Ripper, oh man. It's so thick and there's so many great tones to get out of it. It's surprisingly versatile. Um, I don't understand why Gibson hates basses now. Uh, their bass line now is ugly, very ugly and very uninspired, which is just really weird because they've made some of the coolest basses like the Ripper, the RD. I would love to get a Chris Novoselic RD that has uh, my favorite pickups, the Seymour Duncan SJP3s in them. But, I mean, maybe Gibson will reissue the Ripper one day. But for now, this one, I love it. So those are all the bases that I do own now. Uh, so here's like uh, what I could gather at least uh, and remember for the most part of bases that I used to own. Again, I've been buying, selling, and trading for like 10 years. Uh, so, and it's not much of a, I get bored sort of thing, but just I really enjoy trying out different kinds of bases and really different series from different uh, manufacturers. First up, uh, we have the Epiphone EB3. I hate this bass. Uh, I, there was there is some cool stuff about it, 
But uh, what was really holding it back was that terrible three-point bridge, which the Ripper has. I'm gonna upgrade that to those cool uh, hip shot bridges soon. But, oh man, I hated the EB3. It's, it's a junk base, complete junk. Now this base I got a long time ago. I think I was like 17, maybe 16 when I bought this. Um, bought it used, obviously, just because I don't know how long Epiphone made these for, but it's the Epiphone Grabber, like gr Grabber, so it has the body and the pickup style of a Grabber, but the headstock of a Ripper, but then there are also, I guess the Epiphone Ripper was, uh, it was a PJ configuration. I, I don't know what Epiphone was doing, but it was a fun base, it was cool. Um, I don't think I ever fell in love with it though. The sliding pickup was a really cool thing to me at the time, but I remember not being like 100% into it. It was a great looking base though. Oh, okay, so I kind of regret selling this one. Uh, Fender Aerodyne Jazz Bass. So slick, so thin, uh, both the neck and the body. Man, it was a thin, such a light, great sounding bass. PJ configuration. Um, but it was a fingerprint magnet like no other, which was a, like just, that's just one of those little things about me where it's just like, it drove me nuts that it can never be like perfectly like a, like a great finish because there's always gonna be fingerprints all over it pretty much. Um, but it was a great sounding bass, amazing quality. God, the build quality on it was so good. I've never had a bigger instance of seller's remorse than selling my Gibson Grabber. I messed up. The Gretsch G220022, Gretsch 2202, I think. Um, cool, fun little short scale, one pickup, one volume knob, one tone knob. Uh, had a really great bite to it, too. Um, it was like a mini humbucker pickup that like, gave a really nice amount of output, a lot of bass, and again, a really thick tone. The Lakeland Skyline 4401. I regret selling this one every other day. It's a very flip-flop thing for me. Um, so the I bought it off of someone on Talkbase and they did a matte black finish to it and with the combination of that maple neck, it looked so cool. Uh, such a great looking base. But I hated the pickups. It uh, there be days where it's like, man, these pickups sound good, but a majority of days, it's just like, I cannot fall in love with the sound. There's something about it where I'm not meshing with it. But the neck felt so great. The body felt great. It was a great, just really ergonomic shape that I really liked. Um, the size, the weight of it were just awesome. But the sound of it, I couldn't get over those pickups. I would really have liked to have gotten, I don't know if Seymour Duncan has a pair that could drop in there and just completely replace it, but the pickups that were already in there with the electronics, ah, I couldn't fall in love with it. Made in Mexico, standard P-Base, Sunburst, just like the one I have now pretty much. But I remember this one, I don't know, again, I never really fell in love with P-Bases until this past one that I bought like a, what, a couple months ago. Just, ah, there's something about P-Bases. I don't know what it was and what it is with the one that I have now that I really like, but this one, couldn't fall in love with it. Um, I've had probably four or five P-Bases that, again, I just would keep trying to convince myself, you'll like this one, you'll like this one. No, no. Oh, this was a weird base. Uh, so it was a Squire neck. I don't remember what the body was. It wasn't a Squire, it wasn't a Fender, it was a no-name PJ base that I bought. Um, God, I got this thing for stupid cheap though, like 70 bucks, like all together. Um, it had a badass bridge on it, but what had happened is they took the block under it out and they put a new block of wood into it and then mounted the badass bridge on top of that which makes zero sense. I don't know what happened or what was going through that person's mind. Um, there is a PJ base configuration. Uh, it was DiMarzio somethings. I don't remember what they were. Uh, it was a pretty good sounding base. I remember never being able to get the action right. It never played right. Gosh, I think it was just because of that weird block of wood thing. The Squire P base that I had. Um, this goes back to the cheap bass thing I was talking about earlier. You can get some great basses for not a lot of money. Um, lo and behold, the Squire Classic Vibe and Vintage Modified series. 
no matter what, I've played so many of them, they all played and sounded so good. It was nuts. Um, a lot of them have played better than uh, standard Fenders that I've played before. But this was a fun P-Bass. Didn't fall in love with it because it was a P-Bass. Sterling by Music Man Ray 34. Uh, this goes back to the you can get a great bass for not a lot of money. It was a cool sounding bass. Uh, there was something about Music Man style basses that um, for the longest time I couldn't really fall in love with their sound for some reason. Um, I played a Friends though like two months ago and man, I loved it. I don't know, it was just because I bought that bass like four or five years ago and I was just like, ah, it sounds okay and I didn't really, I guess, know what I wanted in the sound. Um, it also had uh, flats on it and that didn't work out at all. But it was a good sounding bass, like looking back. At the time though, I just didn't like it. I would really like to go ahead and try another Music Man style bass at some point in the future. But that is it for my bass collection. The ones that I own and the ones that I used to own that I remember about at least. Um, but I think I'm gonna thin out my current collection just because I don't use all of these basses. So it's sort of like a what's the point of keeping some of them around sort of thing. Um, when I can just have a smaller, more compact uh, amount of bases that I actually use. But thank you guys so much for watching, for the support, for sharing. Um, come hang out with me on like all the social medias and all that cool stuff. If you want to help support the channel, uh, go ahead and become a patron today. I would really appreciate it. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what some of your favorite bases that you've seen from me are, and really what some of your favorite bases that you have are. Thanks for watching as always guys, and I'll see y'all next time.